Okay, so, um, hey guys, I'm back, sort of, um, yeah, um, so this glare kind of sucks, um, so I'm gonna just try to, you know, not be retarded and, um, avoid it, but, um, so I haven't posted a lot of videos lately, um, I'm trying to remember when my last one was, probably back in March or April, um, and then I did my set the 13 openings, and then I was, I had done a lot of trading and exchanging, trying to complete a bunch of my decks, uh, for the format, which I did, and I uploaded, I think at the end of May, um, but through some sort of miss something or other, something happened, I don't remember, but between finals and school ending and coming home and then hanging out with friends and then uh, I had started a job with uh, my cousin in New Hampshire, which I'm, that's where I am now, I'm actually living in his attic and, um, you know, kind of as a fear can't complain, you know, it's a little bit chilly, but I mean, would I rather be in 90 degree Maryland right now? Of course not. So anyway, um, I had done a couple of videos back in May and I posted them, but I forgot to publish them. Um, so those went up, I think last week. Um, yeah, but they've been in my, you know, queue since late May, I think. So, but anyway, they're up now. Um, but I haven't done anything since then, and it's been about two and a half months. So, um, I've got, I think, three deck profiles that I'll upload tonight, and then another one, uh, another, let's see, I have three Vanguard deck profiles that are going to go up tonight, I have two Buddy Fight deck profiles that should be up by the end of the week, provided my cards come in on time. And then I have one more Vanguard deck profile that's a super special awesome secret surprise that I'm going to save for next week because I don't, like the build I have now, I like it, but I don't have all the cards. Like, okay, so I have a finished build for it, but according to articles I've read and stuff, advice I've taken from other people, I should probably change it a little bit. So I'm waiting on a couple things to finish that and then yeah, it'll be right up, so. That's what to expect from me for a little while. First of all, though, I'm going to talk about, um, yeah, two minute intro, three minute intro, how about that? I'm going to talk about the new format for, uh, Vanguard Worlds slash stand up. Okay. So, I'm trying to remember when, I'm trying to remember how long ago stand up was. Okay. So, I played in the stand up challenge. Which I think was announced right before set five came out, I wanna say. Which was after set four, but before set eight, so that would have been like February, March, somewhere in there. Uh let's see. So I had gone to my locals and there was a moth flying around. Anyway. Um I went to my locals in, at Thanks for Playing in Maryland. And um, I went four rounds and then dropped because in the stand-up format, what happened was uh, it was double elimination, but after that you're done. You know, there's no cut to top eight or anything. And it's also best of one format, right? So you lose twice, you're out, and it's a best of one. So that was a stand-up format. And I did pretty good. Um, I beat, you know, Otsu. Um, I think I was his only loss of the day actually it might have been he might have actually dropped the tournament I don't remember no yeah he did drop the tournament because he didn't get his invite until later but um yeah he he, he actually I was his only loss up until round five I think and I went out round four anyway I digress um but the thing with that format was a lot of people were really salty when they heard about that and now you gotta remember Vanguard players coming from Magic from Yu-Gi-Oh some of them coming from you know Pokemon or Duel Masters you know all those formats, Wizards of the Coast and Konami are doing them, right? So, uh, everything is like best of three time in a round is either a player who has more damage 
loses or player who has more cards left in deck wins or some kind of format like that depending on ooh thank you for doing that actually now that it's gone <clears throat> um but yeah you get the idea so the kind of format was really good um and a lot of people have been talking about this for like you know league of legends format like how best of five is the way to go because if even if someone drops two games they still have a definite chance of bringing it back around. It's like three is the magic number, right? So you got to win those three games, right? And I'm of the believer that, yes, best of five is definitely ideal for any kind of scenario. But in a world of card games where a nine or ten round regional event goes at that, okay, this is from my experience, that starts at like nine or ten a.m. and goes to like nine or ten in the evening, like that is, and that's that's with cut to top 16 or top eight or whatever, right? So like essentially 12 or 13 rounds if the top four don't split and most of the time they don't because you know they need to have a first second third fourth whatever right so that kind of format the best of five just doesn't work right best of five just doesn't work um but for vanguard at least like the thing with Yu-Gi-Oh and magic is like rounds in them can take forever unless some, your opponent gets a really good like advantage and has great field scaling and you just cannot shut them down right but in Vanguard, like, because of triggers and being able to deal, like, multiple damage at once and, you know, long game decks that either win by drawing card advantage or by retiring your opponent's guys, you know, those decks, sometimes it'll take a long time to finish a round for Vanguard, right? So, you may be thinking, okay, what's all this have to do with anything, right? Best of five, 20, you know, taking forever to win, blah, 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 right? Okay. So the new format that Bushiroad is using for their tournament structure this year in their worlds is best of one. Each round is strictly timed to be 20 minutes. And if neither player has been determined a victor at the end of a round, then both players get a loss, right? So that's the basis of the structure. I mean, I know you're like you were halfway through the video and you're saying, okay, so we, so what's the problem, right? You know, you haven't even talked about it. Okay, so a lot of people had problems with best of one format for Vanguard before because if you lose once, it's like, oh, I could have came back if I had done best of three, right? Well, that's part of the reason why they do double elimination. You lose twice, you're out, right? But, you know, best of three would give people lots of opportunities to come back, especially if there's a sideboard thing, you know? Or if you're going to change your play style based on certain texts that you see your opponents playing, you know? I mean, that kind of thing happens all the time, right? But the problem, the main problem with this event, this kind of format they're using, is that it's a best of one 20 minute rounds, and both players auto lose if they go over the time limit. Like, like that is, that is, in my opinion, that is not very, well, it's not a very good format. That's the least I can say about it, right? <laughs> I mean, auto lose in time, right? That's terrible. So, I have a lot of problems with this format, right? Like, the first one I think of is, okay, so, because this is the basic idea, this is what I'm saying it for, this is the overall, you know, idea that I have, right? Is that Vanguard, you know, a game of Vanguard should take 20 minutes. If your game of Vanguard is going longer than 20 minutes, it's because either player is hitting multiple heal triggers, or, you know, there's just a super late game deck that someone's playing Link Joker, or Eradicators, or... Well, I mean, I guess Eradicators is in a super late game deck, but if you've seen the new Ignition Lawrence Force build, you know that they can clear your field in a turn, and it takes forever to come back from, you know? But anyway, like, um, so, yeah, that's the problem with that, is 20 minute rounds, yeah, usually they'd be long enough, but in the event that someone wants to play a late game deck, like, they just can't do it, because the odds of them being able to win in time is just slim to none, right? So, that's a problem. Also, based on what I understand, the set 15 and the next, what's the next extra booster? Bermuda Triangle, yeah. So the new Bermuda Extra Booster and set 15 should be out about halfway through Worlds or something, right? So, by the time that rolls around, every deck is going to be like a late, mid, mid late or late game deck, right? So you're going to have, right now we already have like Starvaders, Eradicators, Jewel Knights, you know, I guess Dauntless, 
uh, Gansalot, Zenith, Liberators, you know, there's a bunch of different Liberator variants. Ezel, another late game deck. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Uh, Great Nature is a late game deck. Uh, Starbase, if I haven't said it already. Uh, Nova Grapplers, all the Nova Grappler builds are late game decks. Stern, uh, Beast Deities are both late game decks. You know, um, I'm trying to think of other builds. Angel Feathers, kind of. Um, uh, Dote, Dauntless Dote, uh, Dauntless Nouvelle, Dauntless Cruel Dragon, Cruel Dragon Nouvelle, all those Nouvelle decks, right? So basically what I'm saying is the meta is all these mid-late, late-game decks, right? Most of them should be able to, oh, and Aqua Force too. Aqua Force is an early-game deck though, so, yeah. But, but like, all those decks should be able to win before 20 minutes in, on a good day, right? But they're not always going to, right? So not only have you picked a format where you've eliminated most of the late game decks, you've also picked a format where the general meta, after the sets that you released, where the general meta is focused on those super late game decks. So what are people going to play? They're going to play early game decks. They're going to play Spike Brothers, Grand Blue, Aqua Force. I mean, okay, I guess. I mean, if you want to play those three decks, that's great, but, like, what if you play something else? Like, the problem is, 20 minutes, even if both players are playing super fast, shouldn't, should, like, it should be enough time, but in a meta like this, where every deck is a late-game deck, or a mid-game, mid-late-game deck, you're putting a lot of pressure on those players, okay? And a good player is going to say, okay, if I get to time, I ought to lose. So what I want to do is I want to push my opponent super hard, super quickly, right? And the best way to do that is to play an early game or a rush type of deck, like Spike Brothers, like Aqua Force. Uh, the only reason I say Grand Blue is because if you play Cosidus Reverse, the deck can really accelerate the gameplay because you're milling your cards, you know? So you may not actually be winning that quickly, but you're going to be accelerating your loss if you don't win because you're going to be milling out your deck really, really fast. It costs like three cards where it's going to break skull. It's like, it's crazy. So... That's a problem, right? You won't you won't be able to see all the decks, right? You certainly won't see like, well, actually, yeah, you will see new value. You'll see a lot of new value because Cruel Dragon skill is an early game skill to deal with Superior Ride Grade Four. That's a great skill. So you'll see new value, but you won't see Dauntless. You won't see Dote. Well, you might see Dote, but you won't see Dauntless for sure. You probably won't see Jewel Knights because Ashley Reverse is a late game card. As good as she is, you know, she requires that four damage. Same with Cancelot. Like, that deck doesn't put in any pressure pre-grade, pre-cross ride. Like, you have s crads and you have 7k grade 1s. That's it. You know, you don't have any pressure from your break ride or anything. You know, Starvaders are a late game deck unless you get the perfect build setup early game and commit, like, 3 or 4 cards. Um, you're not going to be able to get anything to work until turn 3 unless you're playing Nebula Lord and then you might have a chance. But, like, Chaos Breaker, you know, Chaos Breaker can't excel, right? Maybe Nebula Lord can. I don't, I've never played Nebula Lord, so I wouldn't know. Aqua Force will, like I said. Um, Nova Grapplers, no. I mean, Ethics Busters, no, those aren't going to work for you. Stern, Stern might. Stern's definitely a good deck. It's got potential. And if you play, like the turn two pressure you have with the Block Lugers and the, and the Mars Block Lugers, you know, that's a potential. But it's not, like, it's not a deck that you think, oh yeah, this is going to be an early game deck, right? Nova's have a really hard time making back advantage in, in early and mid game without playing like Kira-Ra and stuff. So I think that's a really more of a late game deck, right? Ezel, late game deck. Platina requires ultimate break. You know, other Ezel requires a lot of advantage uh, generated already. So that's kind of iffy on, I'm kind of iffy on that. You know, um, I didn't mention Dimension Police, but they're another late game deck because you can't really do anything until you hit that Kaiser, so. It's like, it's a, it's a really big problem. And even like Dragonica World, the Reverse, you know, Revengers, uh, well, I guess maybe Revengers, no, no, because you still have Limit Break for those. So maybe Revengers, but probably not, um, yeah. So you're not gonna see Dragonica, you're not gonna see Omega Glendios, you're not going to see any reverse decks, you're not going to see Monarch Sanctuary Alfred, and these are the best decks of the format. Like, these will be the best decks of formats, you know. In a standard, like, Vanguard Locals, like, three, best of three, you know, cut the top eight or whatever, like, those are going to be the decks you're going to see playing. But at this event, with this kind of format, where both players auto-lose in time, 
Like that's a really big, you know, huge problem with not even seeing. You're not going to see the best decks. You're not going to see the decks that matter because your format that you've designed is like completely opposite of the meta. It's it's stupid. All right. Now, so that's the first. That's the first two points, right? Is that the meta is the, the format doesn't fit the meta and the and yeah the, the time in the round yeah so you're not going to see as many decks first of all you're not going to see as many decks second of all you're not going to see the actual real meta decks topping so you're not going to see Kagura topping every event except for Nouvelle I mean, but you're not going to see Dragon Overload the reverse you're not going to see Dote you're not going to see Dauntless so what's the point right the other problem is that why are you making it so both players lose in time right let me tell you something at the team regional in New York this year, there were 620 something players. There was 219 teams, right? Oh wait, hold on. So there's like 670 something people. There's like 219 teams, right? After round zero, they cut to like 100 something teams, right? And then they still had six or seven rounds worth of team play after that, where you know you lost twice, you're out, right? So like that took a whole day, you know less than a day it should have taken less than a day like it's not like each player is doing best of three yes it's best of three but it's best of three for each team okay each player on the team plays one game okay rounds shouldn't be taking more than 40 minutes times seven is let's see three times four so like maybe six or seven hours right that's one day that's that's like almost half the time of my Yu-Gi-Oh regionals right I told you already, like eight or nine or ten till nine or ten at night. That's that's half the time almost. So certainly the problem is not that rounds are running long, right? But I think Bushi's kind of shot themselves in the foot because they thought, okay, Vanguard is huge now. We're going to be expecting tons of people at every event, so we're going to need to cut rounds short. We're going to need to have eleven or twelve rounds every every time, a best of one. So to mitigate this, to prevent the thing from running super long. We're going to change the format so now it's only going to be best of one, 20 minute rounds. Both players lose if they get out of time. But now, because of the, this, like I said, they shot themselves in the foot because they said this setup where both players lose in time. And now a lot of players are going to say, well, I don't like that because I'm playing my Link Joker or I'm playing my Kagero deck or I'm playing my Nova Grapplers. I'm like, I don't like this format and I don't want to spend money to build Aqua Force or like Grand Blue or something or like to change my deck even to make it compete more early game, right? I don't want to do that. So I'm just not going to go. So now Bushi's anticipated having people, a lot of people come to this event so they've cut the round short. So now when the events actually do happen, I feel like less people are going to show up because they're going to be like, oh, I don't like this format. I'm going to boycott this event. So that's going to happen. So now they've done they've the 20 minute per round rules come in place, but so they can you know make it go faster with more people. We're not going to get less people, and it's still going to take the same amount of time, right? You see the problem here? Like, I don't know. I think this is an issue because now they've kind of gotten rid of some of their fan base, right? Like, here's my problem with it, right? This is the last point I want to make because the video is running super long, but let me, this is the last point I want to make, right? In every other event, there's some kind of rule where if someone is in time, they always either have a way of determining who's going to be the winner, or they have a way to make them play it out, or they have a way to call it a draw, right? So in Yu-Gi-Oh, after time, right, time of the round, if both players are on game three, then the, then they'll either give each player, like, three turns or they'll give them like two turns right to win or something like that it's either five or seven turns altogether so one player gets through one player gets yeah so it, it's either turn player finishes turn and then each player gets through more turns or four more turns depending on things right so after those four or five turns or however many it is each um the person with more life points wins and then after that the person with if they're tied in life points the person with more cards left in deck wins, I think is how that works. Yes, that's right. Okay. In Magic, I'm pretty sure it's similar. I don't play Magic, so I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure it's a similar thing where most life points wins or most cards in deck wins. It might be different for, like, EDH or something. I'm not really sure. But, like, that's a problem. Like, 
Oh, I forgot to mention, the other thing is, even if both players are tied and they have the same cards up in the deck, they can still call a match a draw, you know? So it's up to the judges to decide whether a match is a draw or a loss, right? Like, in Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic, there is never a lose-lose. There is either win, lose, or tie, right? So, why doesn't Bushiro just juice draws, right? Is it because they want to, like, in their stupid best of one double elimination format, they want to consider a draw to be a loss, technically? Like, that isn't fair, right? I mean, yeah, there's a player who just go play Star Raiders and go draw, 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 and never lose. I mean, that's a problem, right? But what I don't understand is why they have to cut it at 20 minutes and say, okay, you're both done. Why don't they just say, okay, person with less damage is the winner? Or person with more cards left in deck is the winner, right? Logically, that would make the most sense to determine the winner instead of saying, okay, you're both going to lose, or it's going to be a tie, so you're both going to get a loss on your records anyway. Sorry. Like, it's a really dumb format, you know? And I was all set to play Gancelot Zenith for the rest of the format, right? But it's a mid-late game deck. I'm not going to be able to win in 20 minutes, you know, consistently. So I may not even go to this event, you know? Like, I was had this whole thing planned out. I was going to go to Nashville and visit my friend Mason from the Science of Vanguard, and then maybe invite some people from, like, the Maryland, Virginia area, you know, maybe see if Zach Sag or Juan Mango or Otsu or Domino Paris. I know, I know, I know all these guys. Card Fight King. Um, the guy from I Am Vanguard. I don't remember his name. Um, but, like, I know all these great players that have topped regionals, that have topped... Actually, I don't know if any of them have made it to Worlds. But they've topped regionals. They've been to team events. You know, they've done super well. And I know all these people, and they're great. They're great. They're smart. They're cool. And I was going to be like, okay, hey, guys, why don't instead of going to New York, let's go to Nashville. Let's all go to Nashville, and we'll do a whole bunch of great things. We're going to we're gonna have a YouTube meetup, and this will be great. And I was going to plan this whole thing. But now this format comes out, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are going to be questioning this. I mean, now, maybe if they're that dedicated... Maybe they will build Aqua Force or Grand Blue or, you know, another early game deck. Spike Brothers, like I said, an early game deck or a good build that they like, and maybe they will go to an event and they will, you know, push and win. But me, I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that. I mean, unless I can finish Blouse by the end of the summer, there's literally no deck I have that can compete. So, this event is just, this format is just really bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and end the video right here, but thank you for watching this far if you have come this far. But this format, I don't like it that much. I feel like there's a lot of changes Bushy Road needs to make to it. Having both players auto lose up to 20 minutes is not fair. They need to have a way to at least determine who gets the win. So that way, more people can like feel comfortable about playing. Because if, if both players lose in time, that's going to you know take a lot of people out of the frick... Out of, out of, out of, I'm sorry, take a lot of people out of the picture, like, really quickly, right? It's not going to be half the playing field is eliminated. It's going to be half of the playing field is eliminated of people that finished their games, and then people that didn't finish their games are just, you know, they're gone. So, um, it's a problem, right? And then also, if they do keep this format with 20-minute time in the rounds and people who, you know, they lose if, if they run out of time, right? Like I said, a lot of early game decks are going to nominate, and there's not going to be a real meta like it's going to be a different meta from what we see now i don't know if that's their actual intent or or what but like for me personally i think this is not a good thing because you have all these great late game decks that we have been releasing and like i just don't understand this format it's kind of bad so i'm going to end the video right now thanks for watching this far if you have come this far but I don't know. I just do not like this format, and I wish that they would change it somehow. Um, if they release any more information about it, I might try to make an update to this. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, stay strong out there, guys.